So hello Mac and thank you for this interview. So I was hoping to get you after a win, but it didn't happen. So first, like, how do you feel after this game? Um, surprisingly good, actually. I think um, we've had a lot of struggles this split. And even though we didn't come away with a win today, I think we were, like today, I think we showed up a better team than we were two weeks ago when we played against Heretics. Is it two weeks ago? Yeah, two weeks ago. Um, and I think we made a lot of progress on the things that we've been working on. And I'm not that worried for next weekend. You know, obviously anything can happen. Um, but I'm confident in the team. And I think we made a lot of improvements. Like today, I think I messed up the second draft. Uh, and I think the the first game, honestly, I, like there were a lot of like little execution things that were very, very close, you know, like uh, like really small things in team fights, you know, where one guy flashes a little bit earlier and then I think we would have we'd have won that game and like cleaned up a lot of fights. So, you know, sometimes that's the way the cookie crumbles. Sometimes that's the way it happens. But I think in terms of our process and our like path to improvement as a team, today was a good day. Uh, so in, in a weird way, I'm happier with uh, today than I was after our uh, Heretics game. Like after the Heretics game, I was relieved. But I was also worried about the team, you know, because it like we we played very poorly and we were very disparate. We weren't on the same page with each other. We we all struggled a lot seeing the game, seeing the game the different way. Like our communication was all over the place. Like there were so many issues, and I think we've done a good job at fixing a lot of those issues. So um, yeah, bizarrely enough, I'm 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 not worried. Put it that way. So you had like two weeks uh, be between the heretic games. So how did you spend these two weeks? Like, was it like only screaming or you took some time, some time off to reset all the players' mentor? We took a good few days off because, oh, oh never mind, sorry. I, I, I think I just kicked the camera, holy crap. <laughs> um, we took a good few days off because we honestly didn't take much time off after winter finals. So it's been a while since we actually had a good break. So we took a couple of days to get like, get the mental reset and then afterwards we uh we took a really deep dive into how we wanted to play out like a lot of kind of late game fundamental situations we really took a look at what our values are in the late game and tried to get on the same page about how we are playing out mid to late games um i think on a like macro level it, it showed today um i know that's not always easy to see when the fights like sometimes looked a bit one-sided and game two ended in a really like really disappointing fashion right it was really anticlimactic but I think there were a lot of good takeaways from today that, that, you know, to me at least showed from what we've been working on. And for me, it's kind of weird because uh, when I saw Mad Lion doing the Winter Split, it was like pretty convincing and you were like one of the best team uh, in the tournament. And of course, things are not over, but you are like a little bit more strong. So do you have like any explanations or is it because of the meta game, because of the like, maybe other teams? So what happened? Uh -huh. It's hard to pin down exactly what it is. I think there were already, like, we already had a lot of problems in winter, to be honest with you, in terms of, like, being on the same page. But I think we were able to play, like, very easy, very comfortable comps where everyone was on the same page about what we were doing. But in a meta where you have a lot more, like, kind of dive comps, you have, like, more snowball -y comps. Like, we were playing very easy, like, front to back, stack four dragons and, like, stab people with his ear kind of comps, right? Um, and I think when you have comps with more options that's when we started to see a lot of the kind of mm, a lot of the issues really surface i think also you know uh if you look at the bans that teams do against us there's certainly been a narrowing of our champion pool in that regard most teams do the same three bans against us every single week and like struggling to deal with being targeted like that as well as the meta shifting as well as the kind of existing issues we already had i think was a bit of a a bit of a perfect storm so it's certainly not been been smooth sailing uh, I also think that other teams got better, um, and I think also we had a lot of bad uh, bad drafts on my part. I think we had some weird meta reads. I, I think it's kind of a perfect storm of a lot of different things. And before, uh, between the regular seasons and the groups, uh, we skipped like two patches from uh, 13.4 to 13.6. So do you think that it uh, changed a lot of the meta, or it's just the same? I don't think much changed at all, to be honest with you. Like, a couple of champions became more prevalent, you know, like you see more Kennen now. Um, but outside of a few champions, I, I don't think it changed much. And can you tell me, like, what is going to be the next step? Because now you have one more week to prepare. And do you have, like, any prediction? Because you will face, uh, like, either Fnatic or Astralis. So which team do you think you are going to face? Uh, I think Astralis. I think that the mid lane matchup 
against Fnatic is not favorable for them. I think Astralis might actually be like a better team right now in terms of like they're more on the same page with each other. They seem to have a really good team cohesion. They seem to have fun playing together. They seem to have like a kind of uh, like unified philosophy on the game. And like they're very decisive, like they know how they win games, you know, and they're on the same page with it, which is nice to see. I think Fnatic has been on the up recently, um, but I think Humanoid is such a good laner that uh, Leader might struggle with that in ways that he hasn't been challenged against, you know, previously. Um, I mean, their last game against Fnatic was pretty close. So I would, I would on balance say that uh, Fnatic will win. And then between Vitality and Fnatic, I would guess that Vitality would win after that. So you just mentioned Manoid, who is like one of your former players, but you had like another one, like today uh, with Kaiser. So does it feel like a mm -hmm. little bit weird to play against him, or is just like uh, no matter what, he's still a player? Uh, I, I think the first time playing against him was a bit strange, but you know, we've like I've, I've been around long enough to have played against a lot of my previous players now, so. Uh, honestly, it's just nice to play against former players. You know, I always, I always wish them well. I always, I'm always happy when they're doing well. Um, like when they seem happy, that's that's great. When they're performing well, that's great. You know, so uh, and there's all, there's usually like an extra kind of rapport that you have with them on stage. You know, like <laughs> smiling at each other and waving and making silly jokes and stuff like that, which uh, I think adds an extra layer of of fun to the the whole kind of studio like being on stage experience so i i really enjoy playing against old players especially because it makes you want to win more you know both sides are, are really really uh like there's an extra emotional and personal level to a victory or a defeat so i think it's good and if i'm not mistaken earlier this week uh, i saw that uh, you and pad uh, get uh, like uh, contract uh, extensions so can you tell me more about this and was it like important for you like to get the news like before the end of the season um, I mean, this is obviously a, a like deal that's been kind of uh, we've been working on behind the scenes for a long time. It's a deal that took like a lot of kind of uh, like paperwork to do. And it's something where Pat and I like, you know, very much wanted to stay together and wanted to make sure that we were both happy staying at MAD long term. And so it's like, honestly, it's it's been uh, like... How to put it? I, we, I've known that I was going to be extending with MAD for a long time. It just wasn't able to be announced yet because there was a lot of paperwork to be done. Um, so, you know, I, I was pretty clear with MAD that I was happy to stay a while ago and I was confident that we were going to find a deal together. And Pat has been really clear that he wanted to stay at MAD Lions as long as as long as long we're, you know, like carrying on together. Uh, so I'm just I'm just happy to, to have extended it. I don't think it really has impacted me much because it's been something that I, you know, Mad knew that I was happy to stay. I knew that Mad was happy to, to have me stay. Um, so yeah, it's it's been it's been nice. It's nice to have uh, the kind of backup and the buy-in from the org. It's an org where I feel really comfortable. I've played my whole career here or coached my whole career here, I guess, um, since joining the LEC because obviously it was spliced before. Um, you know, I, I have so much faith from the organization uh, like, why would I leave, you know? We have a, a wonderful structure and a wonderful staff and uh, wonderful people that, like, we've surrounded ourselves with and a great culture. It's just, it's a lovely org to be a part of. Then thank you so much, Mike. And then the, for the, my last question, can you just end, like, the kind of shitstorm that happened on Twitter saying that, you know, like, Alioya and Niski were, like, kind of uh, angry to each other? Like, can you just reassure us that, like, they are both friends and they are just <laughs> playing together as always? Yeah, yeah, things are fine. I mean, I think Yoya said it best on his stream where, you know, like the the like the time at which the documentary came out was a bit unfortunate because all of these issues had already been resolved before then, you know, like the um, the there were a lot of holdups with the timing of the release of the documentary, which is like uh, no one in particular's fault, like sometimes that happens. Uh, and that brought things like back up to the surface at a time when it had already all been done, you know, and it also coincided with us performing badly. So then there's like more pressure and more stress. Um, but Yoya had said it on stream already that, you know, like these these are things that have been resolved a long time ago. I think uh, obviously there are always going to be tensions. All of us are here working with each other every single day. A lot of us, like all of us have like bad habits and bad patterns. None of us is perfect. And like everyone, like we have a lot of really strong personalities and mad lines, a lot of really emotional characters. I'm really emotional. I have a really strong personality. Yoya is a really strong personality. Niski has a strong personality. Hilly has a strong personality. Everyone on this team is like a very emotionally strong person. Um, so like these things are going to happen. And, you know, it was a really stressful situation. We played <laughs> three best of fives in a row uh, with zero two down in the series after playing very poorly in, in the final game. 
Um, do I have regrets about like the way that that situation was handled? Of course, def definitely. You know, I think I could have done much better in that situation. Um, did we have like a, you know, Yoya and I had a two hour long conversation after that and like went through a lot of things and got a lot of things like out into the air and talked things through and resolved things. And, you know, did we go into the next split better? I think so. I think things are, are good now. It's never perfect, you know, <laughs> but I think the reality is that you don't see these things kind of uh, like broadcasted and recorded and released very often. So when people see them, it, like there's everyone jumps on it and there's a lot of drama about it. There's a shitstorm, like you said, but um, like the, I assure you that the grass is not greener elsewhere. You know, these conversations happen in every single team. And, you know, they, they might look different and they might be between different people and there might be different words used. And I don't know, maybe it's not someone being asked to take a walk, right? But um, this is very, like, this is just what a competitive team where people are really passionate and frustrated looks like at the end of the day, right? So it's just our job to manage it uh, and get better as a result of it. Um, right now, I think we are better as a result of it. Okay, good to hear and thank you for all these insights and good luck for next week. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye-bye.